Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going somewhere interesting, and if anyone lives in a cold, northern, wintry climate, you might be interested in this product. Come with me, let's go for a little trip. Okay, we're at a place called Florida Garage. Now, Flor we're not in Florida, and uh, the garage isn't really important. I mean, it is. They were nice enough to let us uh, use their facility to, for this video, but let's go inside and check it out. Okay, so we're in the garage here, and we have a Model 3 here. It's just a random Model 3 in one of the rare silver colors here, one of the unicorn colors. And this Model 3 has probably got to be one of the most efficient Model 3s. I mean, Model 3s and Teslas in itself are efficient EVs to begin with. But this Model 3 is super efficient, and uh, I'll tell you why. We're gonna, I'm gonna introduce you to my friend, Paul. Paul, Paul Hi, is with evinsulate.com. And uh, Paul's got some kind of design and thing that he's come up with himself to make your Model 3 or any Model 3, he's put it on this one, uh, very, very, very efficient. How are you doing, Paul? Doing good. Thanks for meeting me, Dax. No problem, Paul. Yeah. So now, you want to tell me uh, what EV Insulate's all about? Well, I'm on a campaign to make these uh, Teslas in general, specifically the Model 3, just a little bit more user-friendly for people that operate in colder climates. We know that uh, really that's the Achilles heel of, of these vehicles, is the winter time. Uh, so just to make them as uh, uh, as manageable as possible for people, especially people with the uh, without the long-range battery. Um, this just makes them just that much more efficient. I found with the complete insulation kit, I seem to be getting about 10-15% uh, better efficiency, better range than your standard model. So uh, when I came up with this concept, I was basically tackling it from two ends. The first one was try to uh, maintain the heat in the cabin as much as possible because that's one of the major reasons why we lose efficiency is because we're having to uh, uh, use that energy to heat the cabin. So I developed some sunroof insulation panels in order to preserve, preserve that, that heat. And that, just the panels alone, increased the efficiency by about 4 to 5 percent. And that was uh, tested at about minus 10 degrees Celsius. Of course, the colder it gets, the more efficient and the, the, the better benefit you're going to have. Yep. Then the second aspect of it was to keep the, the battery as warm as possible. Uh, people don't realize, but um, even from your laptop, your cell phone, to these cars, the battery capacity is all based on the temperature being approximately 25 degrees Celsius. You start dropping below that temperature, and suddenly the battery shrinks. So, if we can keep these batteries as close to their normal operating temperature as possible, then uh, the aircraft, uh, the aircraft, uh, the uh, the car is going to maintain that efficiency. So, the car, as soon as you fire it up, tries to warm itself up to about 30 degrees Celsius. That's what it does. So, I'm just making it easier for, for the battery to warm itself up uh, by installing the insulation. Okay, let's take a look inside and see the uh, sunroof insulation panels. And uh, look at these. Now, as you can see from, from up top here, there's two separate panels, one that goes on the, the front and one that goes on the rear. And you know what? I could sit here and tell you I, I know what I'm talking about, but why don't we get Paul here? Paul, you're the one that designed and uh, put these in. Why, why don't you tell us more about these? So these insulation panels, the idea is that you're reducing the glass area. Um, glass is a semi-good insulator, but especially when you start getting a lot of airflow over it, it turns into a very, very poor insulator. So the amount of energy you're losing from the glass in here is roughly equivalent to the amount of energy you're using to heat the car. So just by reducing that amount of surface area, you're drastically cutting down on that, uh, that energy load. So uh, the insulation panels, they look good, they look somewhat factory, uh, they match the uh, Alcantara and the side panels really well, so anybody that you have riding in the car with you probably wouldn't notice there's any, any difference. They also make the interior feel much, much warmer. Uh, anybody that's driven in these things, they wouldn't notice much of a difference without having the panels. Uh, because they, they're just accustomed to it, but as soon as you drive with these panels, you quickly realize how drafty these cars can be uh, during a really cold day. When you put these panels on, uh, the interior just feels a heck of a lot warmer. And I found that 
I never have to use the seat heat as an example. I keep the temperature around 20 degrees Celsius and uh, even that's more than I need in some, in some cases. And it just feels very, very warm. So you know a lot of energy is being saved. And then uh, they remove really easily. Um, you just have to put your finger up behind them, just pull off the little tab and the suction cups that hold them on, uh, they release very easily. Um, so you can kind of, you wouldn't want to be taking them on and uh, off and putting them on again on a daily basis, but uh, certainly seasonally it's very easy to uh, take them on and off. So the sunroof panels, uh, because they are seasonal, uh, they come in a uh, uh, summer storage bag. So when you're ready to use them, you can just take them out. You got the front and the, and the back. And I'll just remove one so you can see what they look like. Now you could keep these on for the summer too, right? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and uh, so they can be used as a uh, uh, sunscreen as well. Exactly. Okay. So uh, we have 21 suction cups. The reason why I use so many is so that they hold securely and you get a really good airtight seal. Uh, it's also for redundancy because you don't want this thing. If one comes loose, you don't want it falling on you or your passengers. So well, having dry. that redundancy really, really helps. Uh, and this seal around the outside, it, uh, it, it works quite well. They're uh, quite easy to clean. I found that, uh, I haven't really cleaned these yet, but uh, just a uh, soft cloth, a microfiber cloth or a sponge or something, and it uh, comes up really nicely. Uh, they feel good, they look good. So I found the insulating panels, um, they just make the interior of the car a lot easier to warm. Uh, as far as efficiency goes, as I mentioned, uh, they seem to increase the uh, range by about 4 to 5 percent. And of course that fluctuates the outside air temperature and such. Uh, Any time I've taken the insulating panels off for testing purposes or whatever, I immediately notice the difference. It just feels uh, much more drafty. You end up having to turn the heat up and it's just not quite as comfortable an environment as it is with the, uh, with the insulation panels on. Exactly. Okay. And that's 4 to 5 percent alone just using that alone that's right yeah okay and to get the full 10 to 15 percent uh then that's where the battery insulation comes in and i can show you that okay let's take a look at that okay now that we've got the car up in the air paul you want to show us and walk us through what's underneath here sure so there's two elements to the battery pack insulation uh, it's actually more than just battery pack insulation. You've also got the uh, pipe insulation, which is, uh, which is required in order to get the, the full, uh, full benefit. So the first part you can see is the uh, battery pack insulation. So this is polyet closed cell polyethylene foam, very, very robust. It handles uh, snow banks or whatever you run over. Uh, these are held on with um, uh, a special polyethylene adhesive and uh, sealed inside with um, you know all-weather silicone just to keep any possibility of any mo moisture coming out so they hold up very well uh, we have four elements the main reason why i've got that is just on the uh, off chance that maybe one comes loose that um, it's a much smaller piece of uh, material and uh, less likely to uh, uh, be an issue for anybody that um, you know might be following you down down the road but uh, you know, as I say, they're held on very, very well, so I really can't see that that happening anyway. But just as an extra security precaution. Yeah, it looks like it's on permanently. Now, if you ever did need to take this off, is that uh, an option? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It just you can just peel it off. You probably have to use a plastic scraper so you don't damage the paint. And then any of the glue residue can be cleaned up really easily just with uh, mineral spirits. So if you uh, didn't want to have it anymore, it's not a, not a big issue to take off. Perfect, yeah. Just like you were saying earlier, in the event you need to sell the car, if you're upgrading or anything for any reason like that, mm -hmm. uh, someone doesn't want it, or even if you're moving down south to a warmer climate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the, the second uh, component is the pipe insulation. Um, the battery is cooled with uh, 12 channels that run through the, the, the battery from front to back. There's also cooling channels running down beside the, uh, the, the battery pack. Um, in total, there's approximately 40 feet of coolant, uh, plastic coolant pipe. Wow. You can see a little section of it here and here, which isn't, doesn't have insulation, so it's corrugated plastic. And so that's, of course, very vulnerable to the cold. 
So, and there's pretty much perpetual fluid movement through there. So even on the very coldest days, uh, there's always uh, between five and 10 liters per minute of fluid being driven through those pipes. And that's going all through the battery. And if those are not insulated, then that creates a, uh, a huge cooling force uh, that the battery has to contend with. The car is designed to try to warm up the battery to about 30 degrees Celsius as you're driving. But uh, I guess the assumption is that that happens quickly. It actually doesn't. Uh, with my testing, <clears throat> I found that it only heats up approximately 0.1 degree per kilometer. Uh, and that's with a fully insulated uh, car. Wow. So for most cars, you could drive quite a long time and really not gain too much uh, heat. Uh, the only way you can heat the battery up relatively quickly is by using that battery preconditioning mode. Uh, that, but uh, that helps you when you're warming the car up. But uh, when you've actually set off down the road, then you no longer have that feature. And the car is now depending on just the normal battery warming or uh, to uh, heat it up. So for most people, if you uh, have the uh, reduced regen dots that show up on your energy bar, if you have those when you most leave of the, us do, yeah. If you have those when you leave the house, unless you have a very long commute like I do, chances are you'll still have those regen dots by the time you get to wherever you're going. Yeah. Um, so that helps in this capacity. So it just makes it a lot easier for the car to warm it itself up to its normal operating temperature, and then it also doesn't cool down quite as fast. Um, and that's another reason why these, uh, why the pipe cooling is important is because after you park the car, uh, the car is designed so that uh, even two to three hours after you park the car, there's still about five liters per minute of fluid being driven through all these pipes and through the battery. So it's actually actively cooling itself even when it's parked. Really? Uh, which is very counterproductive for us Canadians or anybody that lives in a cold climate. And that's even in winter climate yes. conditions yep. it'll be running that's right i've asked tesla about this and i wasn't given a clear answer why they have that feature uh, it would be nice at some point in the future that they're able to make that an optional thing if you live in a cold climate but for now uh, that pipe insulation helps so it doesn't cool itself down quite as fast um, uh, while that pump is running okay paul um i'm gonna ask a question that most people are gonna ask or some people are gonna ask um what about uh this insulation for when winter isn't around and we're talking summer and stuff like that and overheating. Yeah, it's one thing that Tesla very much focuses on is keeping the, uh, the battery and the drivetrain cool. So, you know, we know that these cars operate in very hot climates, uh, California obviously, but places like Australia, out in the outback and whatnot. So um, Tesla's very focused on keeping the battery and the drivetrain cool. I've spoken to Tesla about this. I've asked them if there's any way that any of the modifications that are done could uh, prevent the car from cooling itself. And they said, absolutely no way. Um, you know, the system is very robust. So um, I can quickly go over how this car cools itself if you, if you wanna uh, hear about that, Dax. Sure. So the, uh, the cooling system in the car, uh, part of it works a lot like a conventional car does. We have the radiator in the front. Uh, you can kind of see part of the radiator and the cooling fan up here. Yeah. So uh, here's our super bottle. So during winter conditions, the car is trying to warm itself up to 30 degrees and, and it uh, very rarely would actually achieve that. So uh, any of the cooling system is obviously shut off over the winter. Um, once it starts warming up, then uh, there's a valve in here which will uh, open up as required and allows the coolant to go to the radiator in the front. If that's not enough, uh, then there's a fan in behind here that comes on and that yep. would assist airflow over the radiator just like a normal car would. Um, if that's not enough, we actually have the compressor here. Um, and uh, that will actually turn itself on if you're really, really pushing the car in, in, a, in hot weather. And that will actually start um, uh, adding to the cooling effect as well. And if that's not enough, then the power output would actually be reduced. Wow. So Tesla thought of uh, everything when it comes to uh, keeping that battery pack cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're all about keeping it cool. The only thing they haven't done up to this point is to uh, make better efforts of actually keeping it warm. Keep it warm. Um, yeah. we, we do have that uh, heating system, preheating the battery uh, when you're warming the cabin. Uh, and that's great, but of course you're taking energy from the battery to do that. Um, 
and that system turns itself off once you start driving. So the only thing that's actually warming these the battery up is just the uh, normal resistance from the, from the motor, which, as I mentioned before, is very very slow. So we're just trying to speed up that process, make it a little bit easier for the car. And uh, uh, Elon, if you're listening to this, uh, we would definitely appreciate any help in those efforts from Tesla as well. Okay, and that wraps everything up. I uh, want to thank Paul for um, giving us all this information. And if you want any more information, go to his website, evinsulate.com. Uh, you can get all more information on that. And I want to also thank uh, Florida Garage for letting us use this garage, letting us use the hoist so we can uh, give you a nice demo of what happened. Um, Paul, what, what, do you, what do you have to say in closing? Well, thanks again, Dax. I, I appreciate uh, you uh, letting me, uh, let me do this. Uh, this is a uh, it's a new idea, uh, but it does seem to improve uh, the um, uh, the winter driving for us people that live in cold climates with the electric vehicles. And the easier it is to uh, 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 to work with the vehicles throughout the year, the easier it is to get other folks into electric vehicles, especially the uh, the Teslas. Um, I've made a I've noticed a huge difference just in the the cabin comfort. The energy use, uh, having that 10 to 15 percent uh, increase in range, uh, that's made a, a big, big difference. And uh, it's not that much of an effort to do up the cars. Now, people hear when they hear 10, 15 percent, they don't. They may think, oh, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. But if you translate that to numbers-wise, you were telling me uh, off camera about some kind of a range efficiency you were getting. Yeah. So I had, um, uh, coming down, it was one or two degrees uh, when I was coming down uh, along Highway 4 this morning, and I, my, uh, my data was showing 159 watt-hours per kilometer. Um, in order to get full range on this vehicle, it's estimated at about 143 watt-hours per kilometer. So um, I'm not that far off wow. the efficiency I was getting during the summer. Um, so that makes a big difference. It does. And that's with winter tires, in the winter, driving, oh, that's, that's incredible. Like, like, once again, like I said, 10, 15% doesn't sound like a lot just saying it, but once you hear those kind of numbers, 150, you said 159? 159, yeah. 159, that's, that's amazing. I just came back from a trip to uh, uh, Montreal and I didn't see under 200. Yeah, now, I, these, it's been a long cars. time since I've seen uh, numbers as high as that. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Paul, for uh, bringing this to everyone's attention. Uh, anyone that is watching this video and is more interested in uh, Paul's product, once again, like I said, go to evinsulate.com and check him out there. And uh, he's got all contact information that uh, uh, you need, right? Uh, yes, we do. And okay. I'm glad to assist anybody. Thanks okay. again, Max. No problem. Thanks for watching, folks. That's all I got. We'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.